is the Big O Show. Right, right, right. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? Feeling good, man. Another Dolphins victory at home. A bounce back win here after uh, the, the blunder that we we saw last week. So <laughs> a little, uh, everyone's feeling a little better today. Yeah, it was a it was a sloppy win, but you can get away with it with the opponent that you played. Yeah. But I think it's still a kind of a lesson for the for everybody, for the team. I would hope for the coaching staff, for the media, for the fans. Uh, this performance today is probably not the kind of performance that you that's going to help you win against Philadelphia. You make some of those mistakes, uh, you will pay the price. And this is why it's sort of a, a good balance that Mike McDaniel has coming off this win of you got some things right, enough things right, but not everything right. So now he has plenty to work with, plenty to, to still harp on. As let me, let's face it, even though Mike McDaniel didn't want to call it a get right game when I asked him about it, then uh, and he doesn't like the notion at all. This was a get right game for for the Dolphins coming off the Bills loss, and then you face an opponent like this that we just saw the previous Monday night. So uh, you, you get through it with a two possession no win, and then now you have Carolina Panthers again. Uh, at home so that's another get right game in the same way so you have these two weeks to just get everything solidified before you now face your next real big test which is the philadelphia eagles on sunday night football in two weeks so what'd you think of uh the performance by let's let's start off with the offensive line yeah, well, offensive line, uh, obviously much better when Connor Williams is in there. And uh, Mike McDaniel spoke post game to the, the impact that he has. So um, obviously that's he's the anchor there. Uh, obviously they have Kendall Lamb at left tackle now in place of Teron Armstead. And uh, he wasn't as solid as he was those first two weeks. He did give up the, the one sack. But all in all, then uh, it's a much better uh, offensive line when Connor Williams is in at the heart of it, at the center of it. And uh, I don't think I saw any bad snaps. Uh, maybe you could remind me if there was, but uh, I think – I think that oh. was – yeah, I don't think there was one. So, uh, yeah, good for him on that in his first game back and uh, and good to see the, the Dolphins' uh, offensive line uh, solid today. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought, you know, I know Kendall uh, gave up that sack where he got turned inside, but there wasn't – you know, overall he played a good game too. You know, listen, li- linemen are, are, are allowed to make a, a mistake in the game. What you don't want is two or three, four – like Liam had six mistakes last week. You know, that that's where it becomes, you know, absolutely out of control. But my brother, watching pain. Uh, let me let's settle something here. Okay. I get that Tyreek had the fastest time. <laughs> I, I think I know where you're going. <laughs> right? Okay, so you tell me if you agree or disagree. I think A chain had the fastest time sustained because okay. I saw him pull away from people whereas for Tyreek he actually bursted out and then ran out of gas and and wasn't able to maintain where uh a Chan maintained he he was able to go all the way see what why did he have to change it on us I can say a chain maintain. <laughs> oh. oh, I can't do that now. This is wrong. No, but seriously, it's, it's like the twin turbo stayed on the entire way for him. Yeah. Oh, and trust me, I've had so many instances where I want to have some wordplay with his name when it's whether it's move the chains and or something or the other and i'm like oh no with the no pronunciation it doesn't work the, the same way but yeah i agree with you the sustained speed because uh he didn't get uh caught up and and tyreek uh, kind of took a misstep maybe a stumble a little bit right at the end i think though he felt that he was getting caught anyway angle maybe a little bit different too plays into it uh as well uh so top speed it does go to tyreek by a smidge but uh but devon a chain sort of sustained that run and stayed in front of the defenders that were chasing him, which is the goal at the end of the day. And uh, to put to put a bow on uh, our previous uh, O-line uh, talk uh, conversation, I mean, yeah, that Kendall Lamb sack was the one sack. It was just one sack allowed and only two quarterback hits after uh, Tua was hit nine times for four sacks was it against Buffalo. So uh, so t- big difference one week to, to the next there. Yeah, yeah, dude. And and again, uh, I mean, AJ, what was he slacking today? Like only like 13 yards of carry? <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, I think at one point his uh, his season average was over thirteen after that long touchdown. 
because he was at that point three for 105 on the game, which is just <laughs> absurd. And uh, and then he ends up with 151 uh, was today. So you know, if he were, if he stayed in the 25 range, you know, I didn't expect him to. <sighs> 13 or say, come on, bro, let's go. Pick it up. Pick it up. A Chan. A Chan. <laughs> yeah, A Chan. A Chan. A Chan. Chan. You got to pick it up, dude. I, 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 <laughs> there's nothing that rhymes with A Chan. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a challenge now. Uh, A Chan is the man. Yeah, I like that. Okay. A Chan the man. A Chan the man. All right. Then that's it. That's what we're going to have to go with. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> sharp today he forced some balls into Tyreek that he shouldn't and 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 bottle the interceptions I know he won't admit it in the press conference the second one he hits Connor's helmet or he kind of has to short arm it in a, a little bit so that's why it wasn't a clean pass and then it ends up intercepted but even having said that to me I I, I have to say today he wasn't his his usual what we're spoiled with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, he definitely wasn't. And uh, the one when you're about to take a 21 to three lead, uh, and then you throw the pick six that goes 102 the other way, that's just inexcusable. That uh, there was nothing to see uh, on that on that route. So um, that one was inexcusable. And then the other one, yeah, I think that's where uh, his height can sometimes come into play and make it more challenging on him because he was sort of lobbing it over a, a, a lineman. Uh, blocking with the O-line, D-line uh, going there. And uh, so he didn't have a clean lane to throw to where sometimes you're so impressed with the way he does find those lanes. Like he times it perfectly when the slant route is coming and he throws it right. between the tackle and the guard. And that's always very impressive. But uh, that time he was sort of – he couldn't really see where his target was, and that's what led to uh, that ball uh, just going the way it did. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, how, how did they uh, come out of this game? Pretty clean, uh, and there wasn't even an injury question to Mike McDaniel <laughs> if it was so clean. Uh, I think uh, just uh, Isaiah Wynn went into the medical tent but then ended up going back into the game, so uh, really a, a clean game. That's what you want is you come away with uh, with uh, a two-touchdown victory, uh, although uh, they kept the Giants in it for longer than they should have been, and you come away healthy is the, uh, the other primary concern. Um, your thoughts on Claypool? <laughs> Yeah, so now the, the Dolphins of Claypool will get a, a big uh, receiver, one that they sort of the body build that they don't have uh, right now on this uh, receiving core. So 6'4", almost 240, and he's also still got that patent speed that uh, that Mike McDaniel likes. So he ran a 4'4", 240 uh, in the combine a few years back. So uh, I think it's low risk, high reward, really. It's just, uh, I, you know, a lot of people talk about his character, and I don't think he's going to come in and destroy what the Dolphins have. They have a strong locker room in here with uh, a lot of leaders that uh, one person from the outside coming in, uh, if he's a bad that Apple isn't going to uh, to ruin things. So I, I think in those cases more so, that guy is forced to ingratiate himself and really uh, fit in with everyone else. Uh, everyone was so concerned the same way with uh, with Robbie Chosen when that happened. And um, although he's been practice squad and then called up, but hasn't really been any issue uh, from that regard. No, dude. Whenever those guys come, uh, they bring them in, uh, the Wilson guy or whatever. And the the second you have your issue. You're out, and that's it. They move on, and there's you're not tied to no big signing bonus. You're not stuck with anything like that. So they haven't been stuck with a bad person, and like that they've been able to get out of those kind of things. But let me let me give you, you know, because I like looking deeper into things a lot of times. Okay, so it's a little crazier sometimes for for we do this on this show. But okay, so. This is a luxury now, okay, that can help actually in many avenues. And if one, you get the big receiver, which is what everybody knows. You get a big body in the offense, high point, alley-oop guy that he doesn't have right now. He doesn't have it at tight end. He doesn't have a wide receiver and because his trauma is out. So two, his trauma is neck issue. I don't know how serious it is or what, but all of a sudden now he's still a young guy. Well, now you bought yourself another year, you can stash him on the IR if you want. But at the same time, well, if you have to stash him on the IR, okay, you now, for the next 30, 
12 games because you won't have you had them this you didn't have them this week. But for the next 12 games, you can now develop a plan for Chase Claypool where he can start with packages, things you want him to do. By the end of the year, you will now have examples in your offense. What the big target to do. Guess what I was going to do? He's going to watch Claypool does the entire time. <laughs> In that offense, so if he gets out for the year, it also is a learning tape, fresh drama for next year. Yeah, and one good thing with, with Ezukanma is uh, I saw him walk by uh, the other day, and uh, at least he didn't have any kind of like neck brace on, on him or anything like that. So uh, maybe it could be something that is not too uh, severe, where where you're already looking at maybe uh, the season. But uh, it, it's a great example to have uh, Claypool and very uh, just low risk, as I said, because it, it was a late oh, round yeah. pick swap that, and it, he's also in the final year of a, a rookie contract. So um, really, it's just. It, it could work yeah. out and it's great or you, you just move on and, and get rid of him if if either he um, is a bad apple in the locker room or it just doesn't fit with him and or he's not working doesn't bring the right attitude right character dude you got to be a king size moron okay you got to be a king size moron you are on the end of your rookie deal Mike Tomlin gave up on you okay that's not a good sign now this team gives up on you. Now you end up with the best offense in football. If you don't find a way to get a role in here so you could just get a little piece of the pie to showcase your skills so you could get somebody to give you a contract because it ain't going to be the Dolphins unless you're going to take a, a serious, you know, haircut. And, you know, because I don't even think anybody's really going to give you money. But if you get to showcase for the next 12 weeks, and if they get in the playoffs and all that, now you've got a, you know, a, a nice sample size to show to people. And now, you know, this is the like the opportunity of a lifetime for this guy. He hadn't played with a quarterback yet. Now he's playing yeah. with a quarterback, one of the best minds offensively. It, bro, if Chase Claypool doesn't get the the, the <laughs> message now, he never will, dude. He That's never true. will. And well, his first year was in he, he uh, coinciding with uh, Ben Roethlisberger too, and that was his most most productive season was when he was a rookie. So had nine touchdowns that year. So yeah, you can see the the potential if he can you could just uh, grab that a, again. And yeah, the, really the closest thing that the Dolphins have to that kind of big throw it up uh, alley oop type uh, receiver would be the tight end Justin Hill the, or um, sorry Julian Hill, the uh, undrafted rookie uh, that you went ahead and uh, and. Uh, got onto the team and made had made the team. So, uh, and now he hasn't, he was injured for a couple of games and you've gotten him in a little bit, uh, wasn't really too much a part of the last couple, but, um, now someone that you could incorporate with uh, chase Claypool uh, as that type of receiver. Uh, okay. Uh, I was talking about this before you came on. So, um, Vic was thoroughly criticized for not adjusting to Stefan Diggs. Okay, which by the way, they did they did bracket his ass in, in the game today in Jacksonville. Uh, but anyway, um, so he didn't do that. The next big moment for him that he's going to get severely criticized, and I think this is hands down in the dolphin community, the media, I don't know how they are in that building, but whenever Jalen Phillips comes back, Chubb or Jalen Phillips are fighting for a spot. Hmm. Andrew Ginkle has has to be your starter. Like it's it, like you're doing a disservice to your defense if you're not starting that guy with the energy he brings every freaking time he plays. He's a tone setter. I think he's incredibly important to any defense because of the way he plays. I think it's an infectious type of thing. Your thoughts? Yeah, I'm with you. I, and I was wondering what your uh, Fangio uh, voice was going to be uh, today. Now, no one should be pounding their chest over them. Uh, the defense looking good against the Giants, absolutely not. Right. Uh, but but they, they needed this kind of bounce back game after what we just saw. So kept them out of the end zone offensively. Their only touchdown was that pick six, uh, the seven sacks. Didn't force the turnover, but uh, all that was good. And I'm with you. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle has just earned his spot that he it, it needs to be solidified at this point. Um, I know there's a lot invested 
Justin Bradley Chubb, first round pick that was sent uh, Denver's way, and then uh, the big contract and um, Jalen Phillips. Now he's has to overcome some injuries too. So um, maybe he might be on a little bit of a pitch count when he does uh, come back, but Andrew Van Ginkle needs his snaps and um, it, it, he's best on the edge. And I, I know now he's added the versatility where even if you have your edge guys, he could play some inside linebacker too, which might into either into either Jerome Baker or David Long too. So, but somewhere he's got to be on that field. And uh, really I love him on the edge because that's when you see him getting after the passer, like you saw when he actually ended up uh, knocking Dan Jones out of the game. I, I I've been an AVG guy from day one, bro. I, I I'm just so glad that he's finally getting the opportunity that he deserves because he's always had that knack for making plays and being around the football. Man, I, I it's you don't teach that. Some guys man. just have it, and he has it. And Did you see just, his motor on the on the one that got called back? The the uh, what was the legal contact? <laughs> I mean, the way he was getting after Terod Taylor at that point was just an energizer bunny. He's ball of energy. Of motors, by the way, on that opening run. Freaking Austin Jackson is like forty yards downfield mm. running with the with the running back. I was like, damn, dude, yeah. you know, he's really turned the corner, man. So after all the shit, you know, they hit on Hunt, they hit on Jackson, they miss on Eichenberg. Two out of three, you know, ain't bad. Right? <laughs> As Meatloaf would say, two out of three, so bad, you know. So it's not, it's not too bad there, bro. All right, what yeah. do you got going on the sunset, or so folks can check you out. Yeah, we're wrapping up a game coverage here. So uh, this win, and then also uh, writing about uh, Tyreek Hill actually giving that uh, football to uh, his his mama, uh, going up in the stands, <laughs> causing a commotion, and uh, getting flagged for it. Which uh, it, I guess I know at first look. Yeah, the referee's got to be like, "What are you doing? <laughs> you you got to we got to flag you on that." He was trying to get the ball to his mom. So. I know some uh, got in the way, and finally they. they yeah, were, he's, <laughs> mom is yeah. behind you. You know. <laughs> Yeah. I intercepts it like he thinks like he's he's like you know in the Super Bowl or something. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, his it? time to shine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Well, he didn't shine, <laughs> bro. He's, no. he's, he's taking uh, Mama's football. I, uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to touch anything that has to do with that, bro. You're 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 taking Mama's football. Ooh, doggy. Tyreek didn't fault him too much because he said it was so loud. He was trying to say it, but he doesn't know if anyone could really hear him. And then I think once it was communicated, the other fans around him were saying, and he and 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 she herself was telling uh, him, "Hey, no, I'm I'm his his mom. That uh, he was he meant to give that to me." And yeah, the guy gave it up. So it was all good. Props to the dude on the right. The dude on the right was the guy that was like, "Yo, dude, that's her. That's his mom. Give her give her the ball." Then. Then the guy kind of picked up like, oh, wow, I'm being a douchebag here. And then he finally like, like <laughs> so the guy on the right has to give a little, get a little MVP love to make sure because he he had the assist on that whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, and, he, and he was in the section with, with Terry Kill's mom. <laughs> that, was, it, that had to be a exactly. great time. <laughs> Follow him on Twitter at David Ferronis underscore and catch his work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Got it. There he is, David Ferrotis. 